Tell us about yes, it. Yes, the name of the speech, Infinity in Five Minutes. Let's give it up for Lance Bledsoe. Lance! Let's go, Lance. I see you, Lance. So, and I'm going to talk to you tonight about infinity. Remember back a long time ago when artists used to paint pictures and the pictures that they painted would actually look exactly like whatever it was that they were painting? And then after a while, some artists said, well, you know, there's no reason that my picture necessarily has to look exactly like the thing that I'm painting. And they call that abstract art. Well, math is kind of like that. It used to be that math was always real, you know, practical and it had to have like real world applications and stuff. And then at some point, the mathematician said, well, you know, we can be abstract too. We don't have to always have everything be, you know, like practical and stuff. So uh, this was happening back in the 1800s. This was happening in a field called calculus, which some of you may have taken in high school or college. And one of the things that you do in calculus is you find the area under curvy shapes, right? And so the way that they figured out how to do this was you take a bunch of rectangles and you put a bunch of rectangles under the curve and then you add up the areas of all the rectangles and that gets you the area of underneath the curvy shape, right? Except for the little gaps in between the rectangles and the top of the curve. And so somebody said, well, if we just keep putting more and more rectangles underneath the curve, then we'll start getting closer and closer to the actual area under the curve. And if we keep putting more and more and more rectangles, then pretty soon we've got an infinite number of rectangles. And what do you know? Now all of a sudden you're talking about infinity. And so there was this one guy back then named Georg Cantor, and he was really interested in infinity. <laughs> but Cantor wasn't really interested in an infinite number of rectangles under a curve. He was interested in something called infinite sets, that is, sets that have an infinite number of things in them. Like, for example, the set of all the whole numbers, right? Like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and on and on. Or maybe the set of all the even numbers, right? 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, et cetera, et cetera. And in particular, he was interested in the sizes of infinite sets. And he wanted to know, for example, was the size of all of the whole numbers greater than the size of the set of all of the even numbers. And you might think, well, since the set of the whole numbers is like all the even numbers plus all the odd numbers, then that set must be like twice as big as all the even numbers, right? Well, it turned out Cantor was able to prove that the size of the set of whole numbers was exactly the same size as the set of all of the even numbers. And this kind of freaked out some of the other math people, and they were kind of annoyed by it, but at first they kind of shrugged and they said, okay, so what, you're just saying all infinite sets are exactly the same size? That's kind of boring. And Cantor said, no, that's not quite it, because Cantor actually was looking for other sets that might be a different size. And he found one, the set of all of the real numbers. The set of all the real numbers is like all of the whole numbers plus some other numbers, like fractions and the square root of 2 and pi. And Cantor was actually able to show that the set of all of the real numbers was actually larger than the set of all of the whole numbers. And this is where the math people, his, his math friends, right, this is where they really started getting freaked out. They said, now, wait a minute. So what you're saying is we've got an infinite set of real numbers, and we've got an infinite set of whole numbers, but you're saying that the infinite set of real numbers is somehow more infinite than the set of all the whole numbers? And Cantor said, yes, that is exactly right. And this is where things started to get really nasty. All of the other math people, they started being really mean to Cantor, and they started like calling him names and you know shoving him up against the lockers and stuff like that. They wouldn't let him be in the smart math people club anymore. And this was really kind of a bad thing for Cantor. He actually ended up suffering from depression, and he actually spent time in mental institutions as a result of like all these attacks on him. And so it was kind of a drag for Cantor, even though many, many years after his death, it was actually shown that he was exactly right about what he had to say about infinity. Well, so all this is just to say that if you like to paint pictures of things that look exactly like what's in the real world, that's great. But if you happen to be the kind of person who paints pictures of things that don't look exactly like what's in the real world, that doesn't necessarily mean you're crazy. It may just mean that when you look at something, you see things that nobody else can see. My name is Lance Bledsoe. 
Y'all been great. Thanks very much.